So, what do you know about Ethiopian Jews? It's a really interesting story. Everyone says that their mom is the best cook. But when your mom is Joan Nathan, cooking can be a little bit different. You called me here to make this show with you. Yes. Why? What do you want me to know? Well, I want you to know what you want to know, but I also want you to know our traditions and what I've learned through the years. She'll teach me from her wealth of culinary expertise. Traditions that have gone on for thousands of years shouldn't, within this one generation of just looking at now, be done. And we'll do like we normally do. We'll talk. A lot. And we'll have some fun. A Hasidic rabbi once said, forget everything, all you need to know is the food. <laughs> That's a good thought. That's what I want to show you. Ethiopians have a close connection to Jews since the time of Moses. Ethiopia has its own sophisticated cuisine and um, Jews have lived there since the time of Moses. I went to Gunder and there, was, there are all these Ethiopian Jews still waiting to go to Israel and they have waited for like seven years. The sense of obviously diaspora and refugees and exile that seems to be written into the Bible and so much a part of our culture. Right, and, and, and what's home? Right. And what's home? This is home, right here. <laughs> With you yeah. is home. I hear you have somebody you want me to meet today. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ephraim Isaacs. And, and I remember seeing him on your show in the 90s. He was a professor at Harvard. He's a friend of Dorothy and David's, my friends from Jerusalem. I knew him in Jerusalem. I knew him in Cambridge. Well, let, let's see what he has to say about okay. Ethiopian Jews and what. Hi, hi, how are you? Great, nice to see you. I think I remember you from childhood. I'm a little older now. So we're about to make what? And we were just watching your episode from the 90s on my mom's okay. PBS show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Corianders and our nutmegs, it has to be fresh. And it tastes much better when you do that. So we've already ground the, this variety of spices. Right. Now we need to mix them. So we mix them now. The this is the game, and the colors are beautiful, as you can see. The red, earth colors, earth colors. Lovely. And, and then we keep mixing this until it becomes even. We keep mixing until it's even and uh, beautiful. Okay, it's very beautiful. Yeah, as you can see. And it smells beautiful. And it smells wonderful. And that is what keeps encouraging you to cook. <laughs> the smell. <laughs> and when we yeah. saw how beautifully you mixed all these spices, they're all ready to go. We're ready to cook. Yeah. And I, I wondered if you could just tell me a little bit about uh, the history of Ethiopian Jews or, or just like why it's important to, to know these recipes. And the, the history of Ethiopian Jews is, is, very, is a big story. I mean, <laughs> it goes back to the time of Moses. Moses yeah. married an Ethiopian woman, <laughs> okay? And then in the, in the, in the Midrash, in fact, uh, it says he ruled Ethiopia for 40 years. Um, and the story of how he married the Ethiopian woman is related to that. There were Jews in the Hellenistic period who were traveling in the Red Sea and they stopped at the port of Adulis and uh, many of them then settled in northern Ethiopia. Another thing I point out is often after the destruction of the, 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 the second temple in the year 70, uh, a lot of Jews became refugees. Now, when refugees don't usually go into the face of the invader, the invaders came from Rome, from the north. So where do they go? They go south. So where did they go? To get, they went into Arabia. They, they settled in Medina as Ratgens, a German uh, traveler to Ethiopia in the 19th century says, he says, I've traveled all over the world. If there is any country that reminds me of ancient Israel, he said, it's Ethiopia. Look, even the Christians of Ethiopia follow a lot of Jewish law, like not eating pork, circumcising children on the eighth day, and keeping the Sabbath, and so on. So it's a very interesting, fascinating culture, Ethiopia. Oh, absolutely. So, so do you remember when we cooked together? 
Yes, of course. Uh, uh, give me some of it. Maybe I'll taste it now. Can you hand it yeah, over? Yeah, here you go. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember, John. Yeah. <laughs> so why do they have, why is there such spicy food? Well, spices since ancient times were very, very important. And by the way, I think they are very healthy. We have for, for this wok, we have nutmeg, nutmeg. Uh, ginger, uh, turmeric, cumin, uh, yeah. coriander. Exactly, coriander. and Lots all of, of garlic. Ga absolutely. Garlic is very central. And lots of onion. Usually, the way you cook Ethiopian food is, I still cook Ethiopian food on Shabbat sometimes. Why do Ethiopians peel the um, skin off the chicken? They think it's cleaner that way. Well, we're going to start cooking and we'll send you some. Oh, please, you can, you can <laughs> show it to me. You can, you can put it in, uh, what do you call it? Uh, in FedEx. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us. So you are going to cook tonight? We're going to cook right now. We've got to get cooking before the sun goes down. Really? Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Well, I, uh, you have my recipe. And then, as I said, you know, by the way, the more onions, the better. The more, more onions, the better. Garlic. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, bon appetit. <laughs> 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 and let me know how it tastes. We uh, will. Yeah, yeah. Great. Very good. Thank very you good. so much, Ephraim. And of course, you have to be sure there is a lot of hot pepper in it. And hot pepper? Yeah. Okay. You got okay. another call. Oh, my, my daughter is called, my brother's daughter. She's from Ethiopia. She's in Ethiopia. Well, she, she, she's in Texas. I have to talk to her. Go for it. We'll, we'll talk to you next time. Okay. All right. <laughs> have a Thank good Thank you week. so much. So, all right, let's should we go. start cooking? Do you remember when we went to Jerusalem with Dad? Yeah. And with Liv? Yeah. And we went to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Right. And only you can get away with this sort of thing. Uh. <laughs> you have an Ethiopian tour guide taking us around Jerusalem, and we crawl up through a little corner of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and find all of these Ethiopian monks living on the roof of the Church <laughs> of the Holy Sepulchre. And only you would get them to then welcome us into their kitchen and serve us their wat and their injera. Yeah, and, and so they dip it in. But what and they it was delicious. Right, and what the, but what they do is they feel that the um, skin of the chicken is unhealthy, and, and, and yet they want to use all the skin. So what they would have done is take a lemon, either put it in water and just soak it with lemon, or take a lemon and just clean it. I mean, skin. clean the whole chicken. Well, let's but they first get quarter. So this recipe says that it has to be segmented, right? Into 11 pieces. Why don't I do this and you start cutting those onions? Okay. This the, makes me want to be a vegetarian, personally. What, chicken? <laughs> well, your father didn't like to see an animal. I've never done it with a raw chicken. I've always done it with a already cooked chicken. Well, that's what they do. They have to cut it themselves. You're doing very well, David. I'm proud of you. Well, you wouldn't let me become a chef, but I did work I, in restaurants. I suggested that you don't become a chef. But in a way, you are a chef. I'm a filmmaker. Really. Yeah, but you, but you like the I'm theater, the same thing. the theater of film. It's like the theater. I mean, if you th if you think of somebody like our friend Jean Louis Paladin, sure. he was I think artist he probably he was an artist in the kitchen, and I'm sure he impressed you Absolutely. as a little kid. This looks like a horror movie. <laughs> well, you're doing well. There's a cookbook called, or not even a cookbook, it's a book yeah. called The Soul of a Chef. Yeah. And he talks about Thomas Keller. Yeah. The chef from the French Laundry. Yeah. And how he wanted to make everything perfect. And how he would store the fish vertically in the fridge so that it would be stored the way that it swam in the ocean. Really? And that he would store asparagus in the same way so that it was, you know, as close as it was to the way that it was alive. alive. And that he said, you know what, if I'm going to be cooking meat and killing an animal, mm -hmm. I better be able to do it with my bare hands. So wow. he said, if I'm going to kill, cook lamb, I mm -hmm. need to go through the experience of killing a lamb and cooking it myself. Wow. And so he killed a lamb with his bare hands. And he said, after that moment, 
He never wasted a single piece of the animal because he had a newfound respect for the animal he was cooking. Wow. So you're saying 12 pieces, and we want to take off the skin? You don't have to, but... But, the, but I know that the Yemenites and the um, Bukharan Jews would take the, the skin off, but they would cook rice in it. They'd put it, you'd sew it up, and then you would cook rice in it for the Sabbath. So that, it was really, you see that? It, it's one piece and you just sew it up with your th thread. That we can do in the next episode. Through the ages. What's the history of veganism and Judaism? Well, because- I'm becoming more and more vegan with every slice that I do. Well, until the Noah's Ark, everybody was a vegan. What do you, why do you say that? Because they didn't, they ate just of the land. That's the neck. And the well, the neck is a big piece. Yeah. My brother loved the neck. Still loves the neck. My father liked the neck. I don't like neck. <laughs> and then you clean it with lemon. That's what he always liked to do. I, I fry him. Is there a blessing you have to say when you clean the chicken? I doubt it. Maybe. Onions first. Onions first. Okay. And I, you know, I did this in, in Detroit with these women, and they had a vat of, of, of onions. Of what? Of onions. That's how they started everything. These are so you find these, these, these characters that are in your dishes? Uh, well, sometimes it's ch chance. I mean, these Ethiopian women, and they were Jewish women, Jewish cooks in a, a restaurant. And I just found them because they were cooking before me, and I thought, oh, this is a great story. So I wrote about it for the Times. I was in Paris, and I was in a taxi. The taxi took us to this kosher restaurant, and he said to us, uh, the taxi driver said, you know this restaurant is kosher? And I said, yeah. And he said, I'm a Jew. So of course I asked him if I could go there for Friday night dinner. And <laughs> But he wouldn't, he, he said yes, but then he asked his wife, and his wife must have said, what are you, crazy? And then he said, no, you can't, yeah, I can't do it. But, you know, that was one time I was really hoping for a, a French taxi driver who was Jewish to get a meal, you know, to write about it. Have you ever gotten yourself in trouble? What? Have you ever gotten in trouble hunting down dishes? So we were in Nice, yeah. and I didn't want to go to a regular restaurant, you know, like a Holiday Inn restaurant. And so we were wandering around. It was sort of a questionable part of town. And we went to this restaurant, and he realized he didn't have any money. So he had to, to go back and get to the mon money to pay for the meal. And these guys, they were all thugs in there. You know, there are a lot of really thugs around the world. And these guys said, she stays with us. You get the money. So. I, I stayed with him and I could hear, I know enough French that I could hear them talking and I didn't like it. So when Alan came in with the money, I threw it on the ground and we started to run. And we ran out of there so quickly. And then he went, he had to have a cigarette because he was going crazy. <laughs> he never even smoked. <laughs> well, a little bit, Not he didn't smoke much. Well, how, how was the meal? It was terrible. Copyright recipe. No, they can't copyright. You look that up. I know you can't. You just can't. But I like it when you acknowledge who you've learned it from. Yeah. That you don't. I mean, come on. How many people? How many recipes are original? So these are pretty translucent now. So let's put these spices in. So add the the, um, the ground chili peppers, the cumin, Hold on. black pepper, black pepper, ginger, nutmeg. Nutmeg I grated myself. Coriander. Yeah, you know, I like to use these. Right, of course, they're much. Micro plan. Coriander now? Yeah, put that in. And just mix it with a half a cup of water. Then add the cinnamon, turmeric, and the tomato. I'll cut up the tomato. I made a mess. It smells fabulous. Yeah. It reminds me so much of making a uh, tagine in a way. 
Well, but it's not as Similar spice, not as many spices. But don't forget, a tagine is the end of the Silk Road. Okay. So that's been cooking down for 15 Ten minutes, right? Nice and gooey. And then you just put. You don't have to brown them because they're going to get browned anyway. So just dump. Just it dump on. it all in. Did you put the uh, other half cup of water in? Put that in now. So simmer it now, uncovered for about 45 minutes. Serve with rice and Ethiopian Sabbath bread. Dabo. All right. See you in 45 minutes. Groovy, come here. You want some what? What? Um, I think Groovy is excited about the smells in this house right now. Oh, they, they, it, they're so pungent. The, t the cinnamon and the tomato and the ginger ah. and the pepper, it just all comes together. And maybe the point of good food and good smells yeah. is to teach us all to take a deep breath. <sighs> Should we go see if it's done? Absolutely. Let's go. Come on, Ruby. Oh, look at that. And serve this with really good Sabbath bread, adabos, or with rice, or both. Why don't we go sit outside by the fire, mm -hmm. take a deep breath, and have our last meal of this season together. I would love it. Thank you for teaching me all these dishes. Well, I don't know if I can remember them, but fortunately I have all your books right, I can exactly. use as a cheat and it's, sheet. It's been wonderful being with you. Aww. Oh, wow. I can't wait. David, not only are you learning from me, but you're also learning to be a waiter. Looks great. Full of spice and flavor. Mm -hmm. Chicken is so soft and delicious. It's really good. I think we got a hit. Now this is not exactly Eastern European chicken, but it sure is delicious. It sure is delicious. And you know, each country, that, that at least that Jews have lived in, they've adapted to what the country is. The, the silver lining of constant refugee status is food from around the world.